Did you know that the English language actually has some really interesting idioms? In today's English lesson, I'm going to teach you about some of the most interesting idioms and their very interesting origins or the reason that we say them. My English students get really confused about why we have certain idioms in the language. So I'm here today to clear up the confusion and you'll actually probably learn the idioms a lot better than if I just gave you an example sentence and short definition. Let's get started with the lesson. Just about every country in the world has their own version of the story Cinderella. And this is one of the reasons why this phrase has become, if the shoe fits. So if you're being very critical of someone and they say, do you really think I'm like that? You can say, well, if the shoe fits. For instance, you might say, you have been lying a lot. I think you're kind of a liar. Someone says, do you really think that? I could say, if the shoe fits, that means if you lie, you are a liar. So this phrase actually started out in Great Britain. They used to say, if the hat fits or if the cap fits. And it actually goes all the way back to 1705 when Daniel Defoe published a poem that was very critical of the British Parliament. He said, gentlemen, and if the cap fits anybody, let them wear it. So obviously after the story Cinderella gained so much popularity amongst the world and especially in the United States, they think of that scene where if the glass slipper will fit her, then she is the true love of the prince. So now we say if the shoe fits or if the slipper fits, but more commonly if the shoe fits. Learning English from popular music is one of the best methods for studying vocabulary. You will learn so much vocabulary in context and actually practice your listening skills as well. One of the most popular songs on TikTok right now and across the music charts is About Damn Time by Lizzo. You might be thinking, what does she actually mean by saying it's about damn time, which is kind of a swear word, but not really. So I'm gonna be saying it in this video. Lizzo actually said in an interview, since the world has been in a pandemic and some of the bad things she was thinking about that have happened in her life, she was thinking, it's about damn time that my life gets better or I experience positive things. And of course, making really popular music is a good thing for Lizzo. So it's about damn time that something has happened to her that is good. So if you say, oh, it's about damn time, this is a really harsh way, but kind of a funny way to say that something has been needing to happen for a long time, and thank goodness it has happened now. It seems like it should have happened a long time ago. It's about damn time. So if you were being rude to your food delivery driver, they show up and maybe it's been a couple hours, you could say, it's about damn time you got here. This means, thankfully, you are finally here, or you could just say, it's about time. This is also kind of rude, but you don't have to say the word damn. So I had to really do my research to figure out what the origin of this next phrase was. The phrase is to be in a funk. If you say you're in a funk, it means you're kind of in a depressing, sad mood, but you don't really know why. And through my research, a French dialect word, funkier, means to smoke or to blow smoke. So we think about the funk being like a smoke all around you, and you don't know why the smoke's there. The smoke is like your bad mood. So to be in a funk means you're unhappy or kind of depressed. We can also use this word funk to mean smell. So you could say, ugh, there's kind of a funk in here. This means there's a bad smell. And then of course, kind of not having to do with either of these definitions, funk music is, it's a whole genre of music. You can look it up. It's very 70s. You might find it a little bit odd if you hear an adult say that they are the poster child for something. What does this exactly mean and what is the origin? In the 1930s to raise money or awareness for certain diseases or certain deformities or any sort of medical thing, they would take a picture of a child that has that thing and post it everywhere and say, you know, give money to this or let's try to help this cause. Of course, now we wouldn't necessarily do that, but now this phrase has been used to say that somebody embodies a movement or an idea or a characteristic. A really literal example is Greta Thunberg. She is the poster child for stopping climate change. 
Now this is a literal example, but if you also believe in a movement, or you believe in an idea, or you think you embody a characteristic, you could say, I am the poster child for hard work. This means I really believe in working hard, I am a hard worker, I embody this characteristic. Or you could say, I am the poster child for cleaning your room. So this is an old phrase, but everyone in the United States would still know exactly what this means today. To do something at the drop of a hat. So after doing some research of where this phrase came from, it seems really obvious to me, but I never knew before. So during the 19th century, when they'd have a race, they would drop a hat and when the hat touches the ground, the race would begin. So if you do something at the drop of a hat, it means that you do something without delay. So this is used in a very positive way now. You could say, every time I ask my coworker to do something, they do it at the drop of a hat. They never waste time. So it's a positive phrase. It means to do instantly without delay. This English idiom is so common, but I was really wondering what is the origin? And the origin is actually super interesting. So you can say that someone has crossed the line. This means they've gone too far or they've crossed a boundary. This can be a real boundary or an imaginary one. So if someone says, oh, you look ugly in that dress, you could say that really crossed a line. I did not need you to tell me I looked ugly. It just means their behavior or whatever they said it crossed a social line, it's, it's too harsh. So this phrase actually comes from maritime language. So sailing or language at sea. The idea was when people cross the equator, they would say they have crossed the line. And it means that the sailor has crossed a very far distance or traveled very far by crossing the equator or crossing the line. So now we use this in our speech all of the time to say that someone has done something that is very offensive. In the 1840s in the United States, there was what we call the gold rush. This was a time where out in the American West, there was lots of gold to be discovered. So people moved out there rapidly to try to make it rich or to try to discover lots of gold that would be worth lots of money. This is where my next phrase comes from, to hell in a handbasket. This phrase sounds very strange, but is commonly used today in the United States. So the idea of this is that they would lower men down the mining shafts to drop explosives. So when we picture a hell being down and we're lowering people down into the ground with explosives in a basket, that's where this phrase comes from, to hell in a hand basket. So when things are going very bad or there's potential for very bad things to happen, we say, oh, this could go to hell in a hand basket. So in the United States, the word hell is kind of offensive. It's kind of used in a swearing way or a cursing way. So be careful with this one, but you might want to know what it means because it's still commonly used today. Things can go to hell in a handbasket. Growing up, my mom would always say this phrase, but I never really thought about exactly what it means. The phrase is to go off your rocker. And this means basically to go crazy or insane. When we think about old people, we think about them just kind of sitting in a rocking chair all day, maybe just not doing much. If they fall off that rocking chair, that means they might be losing their mind or something is wrong with them. So off your rocker is just another strange way to say that someone has gone crazy. And of course we can use this phrase in a really playful way too. We could say, oh, you like iced coffee in the winter? Are you off your rocker? This means that seems kind of crazy because it's cold in the winter and you're drinking cold coffee, but I do this, so maybe I'm off my rocker. I hope that you really enjoyed learning about these interesting idioms with me today in this English lesson. You can visit EnglishWithKayla.com for more English lessons and to learn more English with me, Kayla, as your teacher. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next lesson here and make sure to check out some more videos with natural English phrases. It will really help improve your English vocabulary. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye.